cord bin. I even whipped out a different. set of headphones I panicked I was like what is it what it was the cord it was the audio cord that's it it was just the fucking audio cord literally like it was so weird I can't even describe to you what it was doing so I have a desk uh like speaker that I listen when I'm not streaming I have it on I have like music on or whatever on my desk speaker so how I don't even know how to explain this I would jack, like, I noticed it this morning when I first turned my computer on, when I turned the volume all the way up, it was so goddamn quiet. Like, noth barely anything was coming out of my speaker, and then the mor moment I unplugged that bad audio cord, the volume jacked up to where it should be. How can I do, how does that even make sense? How can an audio cord, I just don't, I don't, it was so quiet, like... I don't, I'm just so glad it wasn't my headphones. <laughs> Cause goddamn, these are expensive. Fucking Windows 11, dude. You're probably, there's no way the cord was kinked. Literally, it just lays on my desk. I can see both ends of it. Like there's no kink, there's no, uh, nothing on it. It just went bad, like something happened. Cause there's no, uh, it's better. I can hear, that's, I can hear in both ears. We're great. It's great. We'll blame Rod. We'll blame Rod. Abs oh, side note, speaking of Rodney, I think that boy brought bad juju to my house because my gecko laid another couple of eggs, which means she got pregnant before I was able to separate them. And I can't, like, <laughs> Rodney, I can't do this. <laughs> Your mother, no shit. Mother, mother of dragons. God damn it, Rod. So, apparently I just have the house of breeding or something. I don't know. The little geckos are doing great. They're still super fucking small and adorable. The eggs are so tiny, right? It's crazy when you find them r compared to what they became. Like, they grow relatively fat, like, big. It's kind of shocking. It's fun. Like, I'm not mad. It's just I don't need more geckos. You know what I'm saying? It's just a lot. I'm becoming the crazy gecko person. Geckos aren't like scorpions. You can't just, like, kill them or get rid of them. They're living little beings. Good morning, Dream. How are you, love? Heresy. I, well, I know shit. I have two, four, five, six... Wait, no. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I have nine geckos. That's a lot. That's a lot of geckos. Like, fuck. And because they, you can't house females and males together, you have to have separate enclosures. It's getting insane. <laughs> it's like... I never wanted to be a crazy gecko person. I didn't plan for this. <laughs> Is there, what is, what is a group of geckos? Honestly, I don't know. I'm going to Google it. What do you call a group of geckos? A lounge. Oh my God, like lounge lizards. It's a lounge of, I have a lounge of geckos. That's hilarious. That's adorable. That's pretty cute. I didn't know. Lounge lizards. Yeah, never even thought of it. It's literally a lounge. If everyone wanted to fuck around me, I'd be getting- They want to fuck around you, not you. <laughs> you don't want to fuck my geckos, the fuck? Nine geckos, your car insurance must cost next to nothing. I don't have any day geckos. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. They don't have little lounge chairs because they're not- I mean, they're actually fairly active. Like, geckos, are, my geckos move more than any animal I have. They jump and, like, fling themselves against the glass all night long. Like, while I'm sitting here during movie nights, I just hear, like, dunk, dunk, and then tink, tink, tink as they're, like, crawling across the screens on the top of their cage. They're very active, especially at nighttime. But maybe because, because at night, I don't know why they would, maybe... They're so noisy. Did you ever hear the ones behind me croak at you? 
It doesn't happen every night. It's it's like once a week. And all you you heard it, isn't it weird? Dude, I before I own it's only these two species that croak. The other ones have never made a noise that I'm aware of. I've never heard, other than flinging themselves against things. These two, though, I have two up here, these two enclosures right here. They're Lichianus rachidactylus, otherwise known as lychee geckos. They're the biggest gecko in the world, and I didn't know this, but they make this sound. They croak at each other, and I don't know if they're, like, they're separate, and they croak at each other through the glass. I don't know if it's a male and a female or what the fuck is up, but they make sounds. Like, little did, if you didn't know this, I've told you guys this before, but, like, geckos literally got the name gecko because the first person to find one found it because it made the sound gecko, apparently, allegedly. Like, the gecko went, gecko! And they were like, oh my god, it's a gecko. Nah. The name of a group of things is fucking wild. A group of Canadians is called an apology. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use that. That's great. <coughs> you need one of those tiny lounge chairs you see at the beach or at the pool with the giant umbrellas. I wonder if I could make one. I could probably make a little lounge chair. They would lay on it. Like, that's all they do. All day, they, they basically perch on a branch and sleep. The puppers seem okay. Trick's foot's bugging him, but other than that, he seems a lot better. Random question people might have an answer. Any idea what I can do with, with old... Wait, wait. With old, like, heart-healthy recipe books. Goodwill said they can't take them for whatever reason. A library? Goodwill turned away books? Now, I'm going to fuck you with Satan's cock. Huh. Mag. Holy six fucking years. How has it been that long? I don't know. The world is broken. We're all dying. <laughs> Holy shit. Thank you. Thank you for subbing to the class, keeping the class alive, giving it to me so fucking long. God damn. That's a long fucking time. Thank you. Taking a break shredding papers because I overheated the shredder. Jesus Christ. Good on you shredding shit, though. That's smart. That's a long fucking time. Thank you. Let's cheers one moment. No long. It's cook. I mean. It's a. Dream. I don't know. I'm having a hard time with that one. How can you say a cookbook? is no longer considered accurate. It's a cookbook. Like there are people on the internet who collect those kind of things and make content out of them on purpose. I would try a library, that sounds crazy. Oh, Viata, and you probably already know this, but in case anyone else didn't, if you lose a loved one, Coombs has medications, please for the love of God, do not flush them down the toilet. We don't do that anymore. Take them to a pharmacy. They know how to dispose of them appropriately. But when people pass away and they have a shit ton of medications, do not flush them. There's no magical, mystical filter in our water system that can filter out microscopic particles of dissolved pills. That doesn't exist. So everything we were flushing down the toilet for years and years and years is slowly leaching into the aquifers and into our water system. And it's pretty terrible. So, yeah, there's pouches you can buy that destroy them that have a chemical in them. You can also take them, just take all the bottles to a pharmacy because they'll recycle the bottles and stuff like that. Like, there's so many other ways to get rid of them, but whatever you do, just don't flush them. The only way I'd see saying that can't take it is if it's, like, now, now seasoned lightly with lead flakes. Ex literally. Or if it's, like, if it's, we're heart healthy, eat a pound of bacon a day. But it, I swear to God, they're probably accepting uh, fucking Adkins books. I see Adkins shit in used bookstores all the time. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Good morning, cuteness. How are you, love? They keep finding anti depths in the wastewater. Yeah, my dad builds water treatment plants for a living. So I kind of grew up with that knowledge a little bit. But there is nothing like, there's actually kind of this, they're doing a study right now because, like, uh, birth control like hormonal birth control, the way it goes in you, that pill in that hormonal form, you pee it out exactly the same. And they're doing studies because they think that the sheer amount of birth control being pissed into our drinking water is what's leading to infertility issues in people now. It's wild. There's a lot of studies going on with it because of sh so all the shit. I mean, same with um, Adderall, any kind of ADD medication. If it's, an, if it's a 
stimulant, the way it goes in, it comes out exactly the same way, which is why a lot of meth heads will drink their pee. It's very, very sad. But all of that's in, like, it's going into the groundwater, and it takes years for it to go into the aquifers that we're pulling out of for our drinking water, but it will happen if it's not already happening. Because none of that gets filtered out, like... That there's no mystical, like, treatment for that, you know? I can eat a pound of bacon a day? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I got a copy of Mrs. Beaton's Book of Household Management from a store. Dude, I would have got that so fast. It was giving away free books to save them from being pulped. See? That's what I'm saying. I would buy something like that. I would take that so fast because that's classic. That's like, it's, it's kind of, you know, an heirloom a little bit. I got books from American Heart Association, The Smart Sugar Diet, The Blender Way to Better Cooking, like so many. I would try a library. Seriously, tell the library that the fucking Goodwill said no, because that is so bizarre. <coughs> a whole pound of bacon's a lot. Now, half a pound? That's a lot of bacon. We would all die. Wasn't, I mean, my mom had me on the Adkins when I was a kid. I don't remember all the specifics of it. We weren't, like, it wasn't like I was looking into it. But I'm pretty sure there was a concept to the Adkins where it was like, you can eat all the meat in the world and apparently you'll be fine. Like, that's what they were touting at you. It, it, cheers. At, basically, Adkins... Keto and paleo are virtually the exact same thing. They just use different wordage to get the idea across, depending on what we deem evil at the time. So, like, it was Adkins, where it was, like, eat all the, all the fat, all the protein in the world. Like, it was totally protein-focused. And then it went to keto, which was fat-based, because the world was like, we don't really need all that protein. We're going to be pro-fat. And then it went to paleo, because everyone was like, we want to be natural cavemen. But it's essentially the same thing. There's no such thing as magic food. Period. I won't buy it. There's no such thing as magic food. <coughs> what if I dilute the bacon with a pound of cheeseburger and fries? Is there ketchup? Because that's a vegetable. Oh, God, Viata, he's going to be wrecked. <laughs> I do that, too. It's basically keto that went into paleo that went into something like they're always evolving it depending on what society like, you know, in the 90s, I think it was everything was was it sugar free or fat free? It was the 90s, early 2000s was sugar free, fat free. Everything was sugar free, fat free. So when we like demonize fat, that mystical diet shit alters to something else. It's just it's a cycle. It always goes there. It's sad. Right, Vex? Yeah. Are you saying all those ADHD fish and gators in our sewer systems and water could be super focused and productive? Very much so. Possibly. If, if they have ADHD. Yeah. To be fair, I did lose 20 pounds on keto, but that's because a high fat diet kills your appetite. That's, I mean, that's literally it. Exactly, Press. Like, the keto, the paleo, the whatever. It's, it's literally a case of you are eating macro molecules versus micro molecules. Micro molecules being like vegetables, vegetable, micromolecule means it's easy to break down. The stomach acids and bile of your stomach break it down really quickly and easily into a digestible form where your intestines can soak them up into the bloodstream, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas a macromolecule, i.e. protein or fat, takes so much energy to break down to an actual absorbable molecular size via the intestinal walls that you would literally just eat less calories because you're so full, you're satiated, your stomach is taking exponentially long time. Versus carbs, you can eat carbs and be hungry in a couple hours because they're really easy for your body to break down. So, yeah, you do inherently, when you do something like that, you end up eating less calories just because you're so goddamn full. And you get sick of eating the same thing all the time. So you tend to eat less anyways because there's not as much of a variety. But it's not magic. There's no magic to any of that. Was it 90s was the fat and then early 2000s everything was sugar-free? I usually just make some kind of meat and put it on a giant bed of lettuce with a bit of cheese and ranch dressing. Fast, easy to go. That sounds delicious. I used to do it with chicken a lot. The lies of fat-free food where they took out all the fat and just added sugar. Exactly. And that's, that's exactly it, Mag, is there's no such thing as a perfect food where they removed the tasty part and suddenly it just tastes good. They just replace it with what we're not villainizing at the time. So if we're not villainizing sugar, they'll replace fat with sugar. They got to make it taste good somehow. That's the only reason it tastes good. Yeah, no shit, Viata. A lot of people, and it's if it's under, like, a doctor's supervision, I think it can be really great. It's scary to me. I would never suggest doing Adkins or Keto or Paleo on your own because it's so easy to fuck up and fuck your body permanently. Like, you could pickle your liver. 
Put it this way, the military gives you three balanced meals, makes you drink a shit ton of water and work out for a, vigor for a vigorous hour. It's not rocket science, it's discipline. The military is also fucked up, though. Like, I've known multiple people in the military who were stacked, and they were put on a borderline starvation diet because their BMI was too high. But it was muscle, because the military still goes by BMI. Like, there's nothing's per- nobody, no system is perfect, nothing's perfect. If you mutter BMI at me, I'm going to stop talking to you. Like, that, just get the fuck out. There's no, that, that, they use it as a scare tactic. Like, I'm sorry, if you are six foot three and they're telling you to be 150 pounds, no. But they will, because they'll go by BMI. That's fucked up. Like, I, it's fucked up. I actually eat a high fat diet now to help curb my appetite, but cutting out an entire food group is crazy. I agree. I love fat. I'm all about fat. I, I'd take high fat food over sugar any day. I cannot get behind any diet that isn't sustainable. And that's the thing. They're just, it, it's, you really just want to say goodbye to bread the rest of your life. If the diet you're using to lose weight isn't the same diet you can eat five years later, the chances of you getting weight back are um, grow significantly, right? And I just, I'm not willing to say goodbye to bread the rest of my life. I love bread. And like, when you really break down into keto and Atkins, like they start villainizing vegetables. Veg they'll be like, Un you can't eat onions. Onions have lots of carbs. And I don't know if I can really take anyone seriously that says I can't eat an onion. Like that, see, you know, there's a lot of vegetables with carbs, but the villain, the, I don't know, it's just, it's odd. I was attempting to do keto a few years ago, and uh, I found out about alpha the fuck. My sister, wait, wait, correct. My sister was in an amazing health, but her BMI, according to the army, was too high, and they nearly killed her. No shit, that happened to my sister's ex. I, I mean, I've, it's happened to multiple family members of mine, but my sister's ex was literally that 6'3 kid who was just, he looked like Taylor Lautner in Twilight. No exaggeration. Multiple people made that comparison. He looked, st he had visible stacked abs. But because his weight was above BMI, the military put him on a starvation diet. And it was grotesque. It was disgusting. He got so cut and lean, he looked nasty. Like, n that's just not good. Most, I mean, Vex, if you have any amount of muscle, chances are you're going to be in the high end or over your BMI. I think I'm in the high end of my BMI. Whatever the fuck that is. I haven't looked at it in years on it. It's such bullshit. They use it as a scare tactic for people in hospitals. Like, well, your BMI is 85, so <laughs> that doesn't help people to scare them at all. Your brain absolutely needs fat. Your brain, your body needs all of the molecules. Your body needs carbs. Your body needs protein. Your body needs fat. Your body needs everything. Like all of the things that we eat, your body absolutely needs. Also, onions are delicious. You just shouldn't eat, like, three of them. Right, like, don't eat... Th uh, who the fuck's doing that, though? Like, that's insane. It is. I mean, Mag, you know this. Like, back when um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was, like, at his fucking, like, peak, just jacked, stacked, fucking wing muscles and everything, he was considered morbidly obese by BMI standards. Because BMI does not factor in muscle at all. You got to go do those caliper tests if you're really worried about fat, which you shouldn't be. You're fine the way you are. But if you are, the caliper things where they actually measure fat percentage, that's that's about as far as I would go when it comes to breaking down the, like, I don't know. It just seems so dangerous. I was so paranoid when on keto. You're terrified something will kick you out of ketosis, right? And the crazy thing, this, press, this is crazy to me. So when I learned about this ketosis thing and stuff, we learned about it because when I was working in hospitals, we had a huge influx of people with eating disorders due to keto and paleo they were starving themselves and it's wild that this this same symptom occurs in people on keto as it does in anorexics i was just talking about this in movie night last night but um when you when your body starts to eat its own muscle your breath starts to smell like fruity pebbles and in the keto obsessive world that's people like treasure that they're like, oh my God, I'm in the best state of ketosis. My breath smells like fruity pebbles. But it's literally your body eating your fucking heart. Like, actually. Breaking your muscle and eating it. It's acetone coming out your fucking mouth. And it happens it, to, to well-fed ketoacidosis, people in ketoacidosis as well as people in anorexia. Because it's they're both of their bodies are doing the same thing because they're being deprived of essential fucking nutrients. 
It's really scary. Literally eat your heart out. No shit. It's, it's like, it sounds like an exaggeration. It's totally not. When your body is starving, it starts to eat itself. And your heart is just one big fat covered muscle. And there's a huge percentage of people with eating disorders who don't live past 40 because they recover in their 20s, but they have a heart attack because their body had already eaten away so much of their heart. There's no way to gain that back. It's very, very scary. I'm very intense when it comes to this shit, but there's no such thing as magic food. Eat balanced. Cut your calories if you're worried about it. Walk a couple times a week. Stop with the magic shit. You can do permanent damage to your body. Permanent, irreversible, terrifying damage to your body. It's not, I hate these like influencers on the internet that are like diet gurus or fucking whatever. Stop it. Stop it. I'm 5'11", 182 this morning. According to my BMI, I'm outside my range. Crispy, no shit. At si- I don't remember BMI, the BMI number, but the last time I went to my gyno, I asked her just randomly. I was like, like, what is, because she like, she rolls her eyes at BMI too. I'm like, just out of curiosity, like, what should my weight be? 150 pounds at six feet tall. 150 is like the high-ish end. That's insane. Do you know how thin I would be? I would be ribs. I'd be a fucking matchstick. I'd literally be a, that's like 20 pounds less than me right now. Where is it going to, where is it going to come from? Where is it going to, where is it going to come? Where, where, where is that coming from? I'd literally, it would have to eat muscle. It'd have to eat my ass. And I say, fuck that. I'd be fucking emaciated. I don't want that. I don't want that body. I don't feel comfortable in that body. Some people are naturally very thin. Hatari, you shut your mouth and you know that. You know I'm not coming for you natural skinnies. I'm not that though. Come come now. Come now. Come now. Where's it coming from? Obviously not a naturally thin. There are people who are naturally very skinny. That's facts. And there are people like me who are, we just hold muscle. I hold muscle like crazy. Genetics suck. <coughs> yeah, it's all fit. Literally. I'm 5'5", five, five, my range is 115. What? No, cocky. Oh, that's a child. At 5'5"? Five, five? I don't understand. I don't understand that. That's just, that's a child. That's how much your boobs weigh. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Who doesn't want to be ribs? I know you could play like that ding, 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 ding shit on your, like, let's fucking go. I don't understand who created BMI and whoever thought that was a good idea to put in. Cause no matter how weak you are, you still have muscle. Like we all have, that's how we fucking move is muscle activation fibers. Everybody has muscle. So if someone literally presented a mathematical equation to me that was like, here, this is how we can gauge whether people are a healthy weight. No, it doesn't account for bones or muscle. I'd tell them they're a fucking idiot and to go home. Who said, who was like, yeah, great, great plan. No shit, Hatari, my best friend in college, exact same way. He was literally like 6'1", and I swear he was maybe 135. Like you, he had a hard time finding clothes that fit. And when we were in school together, he was going through this phase where he was trying to gain weight and he was doing it all. He was doing like the chugging milk thing, the eating billions of calories a day, like just, I mean, I watched it. It was exhausting to watch the sheer amount he tried to eat and he gained nothing. I think one day he came into work and told me he lost a pound. Like there literally some people are just thin and it, the way that you feel about not being able to put on weight is the way I feel about trying to lose weight. Our bodies say no, cause this is the way we're supposed to be. And it sucks. Grass is always greener, right? <coughs> His metabolism was insane. He literally was, had a, had like a, an alarm to eat once an hour all day. He would eat like a thousand calories an hour. That's how he was and he was working out and everything on top of it. It was crazy. It was just impossible to build muscle. He's just naturally fucking into this day. He's a matchstick. He's literally thin. It's just, that's, some people are. It's, what are you going to do? That's just facts. <coughs> BMI can eat my ass, 100%. I don't know why I always say eat my ass, because I have a lovely ass and it's very clean, but that got stuck in my head. Right, that's what I'm saying. My mother's 5'1 and weighs like one t- 115 and she's a tiny thing. It just seems unrealistic. It's crazy. I worked with a woman 
back in my 20s that was in her 40s with three kids that weighed under 100 pounds, right? It's it's natural. Some people are very thin. And, like, there's that – there's, like, a – this chart I've seen before, and it's made up words and whatnot, but there's these body forms, and they it kind of does make sense in terms of genetics. Like, it's like endoform, ectoform, and something, but it's basically like people that are naturally thin, people that are naturally athletic, and people that naturally just put on weight really easily, and it does have a lot to just come down to genetics. Some of us are really efficient at, knock your bong over, at saving energy and storing it, and some of us are not. Some of us are efficient at burning. <coughs> it sucks. It's just real. Males at 5'5 five five range 122 to 150. Females. I don't understand how someone 5'5 five five and myself can be in this, can have crossover ranges of weight in a BMI scale. Like, how is a six foot person 150, but for a 5'5 five five person, it's, I don't understand. Like, that's where this shit is broken down. That doesn't make sense. The last time I did a serious book, I managed to get to 219, but had to eat close to 4,000 calories a day. I can't. I am so, like, I get personally, like, really worked up about the fact that every day I wake up, I have to start this whole food thing over again. This whole, like, oh, my God, we've slept and we're hungry. God damn it. Now what? Drink some coffee. Hope it goes away. Wait a couple hours. Hope, like, it's every day for the rest of my life I have to figure food out. I'm tired of eating, okay? Fuck. Give me a day off. It's, it's like, I just, I'm like, per I'm just tired. I don't want to think about it. I just want a pill you put in the microwave and you have a chicken. That's all I fucking want. I remember in gym class, my friends would be all be pissed because my burned, by, my burned calories were higher than theirs and we've been 100%, I mean, that's, that's a huge, really good example is some people just naturally burn way more calories. Like, for instance, I don't burn as many calories as some people at because my heart is so goddamn efficient. Like, in order to get into, like, you know, weight loss mode, you have to get your heart up to, like, 120, 130 at least. I'm, my heart is so fucking efficient at recovery that I can't take rests. Like, a, a minute rest, my heart rate's back to 60. It recovers stupid fucking fast. So I have to, that's why I stick to cardio mainly is I have to, that's the only way I can keep my heart rate up for a regular, for like an amount of time. And that has a lot to do with it, I think. I do. Oh my God, Vex, that scene in It's Fifth Element. When she like has a big old bowl and she just dumps some pills in it, puts it in the microwave, pops it out, and it's like a roast chicken and all the fucking trimmings. Yes. Absolutely. I'm tired. It's a damn chore. It is. Bobo, I 100% understand that. Like, I'm just tired. It's exhausting. It makes it so food's not fun anymore. How are you, Sarah? I got to figure it out and make it be healthy and save money. I don't. You're asking a lot. <laughs> uh, calculator for days, daily medicine. Daily. I can read this. I swear to God. Daily basal metabolic rate or the calories you burn just existing. You as an individual will vary, but it's a good general. It is. No shit. I've done so glut. When I worked at the, P when I worked at the PFT lab, we actually did that test to people. Like the, the real, you know, how many calories, how much uh, carbon dioxide and how much oxygen do you actually use? And when I was learning how to do the test, my mom was teaching me because my mom is also an RT for those who don't know. And so she was like, we'll just do the test to you and we'll see. And mine was pretty on point. Problem with mine, again, back to my fucking heart, it's great that it's efficient, but it's really annoying sometimes. My heart rate drops so goddamn low that the machine, you can't set the alarms low enough to not go off. So when we do these metabolic tests to you, basically we lay you out on a couch, we put a blanket on you, and then you have this mask over your nose and your mouth that's airtight with this big old hose coming off of it that goes into our computer. And we just have you lay there for 30 minutes and hopefully you go to sleep because we want your basal metabolic rate. So your rate at rest. So essentially, how many calories does it take to keep you alive? A minimum, like while you're literally sleeping. That's what we're looking for. But I shit you not, every five minutes I would pass out. The alarm would go off because my heart rate would drop to like 55 and the machine's like, she's dying. But when I do that calculator, it says my basal is like 17 or something like that. And when I did the actual test, it was around 15-something. 
and that's with it alarming constantly and my heart jumping up. So like, it's not bad. I don't, I don't think it's a horrible calculator. Obviously there's going to be give or takes anywhere. Cause no one's exactly, no, we're not robots as much as we want to be. Natural castings. Yum. My mom said the family was all tall and thin. I was pretty scraggly until I had kids. No shit. See, I, it's weird because I, I look like my dad's side, so I have no idea. Like, I'm it. There's no one for me to look at and be like, oh, that's what I'm going to look like when I grow older because my mom's side's all short Irish women. They all get, like, short and stout. That's not going to happen to me. I mean, I'll lose some inches, I'm sure, but I'm not going to get short and stout, so I don't know what's going to happen. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see. It's like an experiment. Ooh, David, nice. What is this? A gift. Knives made it. You know what's crazy? It lined up. It was lined up this morning. It, it actually was lined up, and now it's not lined up again. My sister has a similar problem. She's run a couple marathons. My doctor has told me it's a runner thing. The women in my family all have low heart rates. Like, I know it's definitely part genetic. All the women. Like, even my alcoholic nana who lived off chocolate and booze. Low fucking heart rate her whole life. Never had a heart, high heart rate. But when you run... Or have any kind of regular cardio, it just does it even more. <laughs> but literally, none of our machines, like, I, I pity the nurse who has me if I'm ever in the hospital. Because my alarms are going to go off constantly. I already know it. My heart rate's going to be low. My blood pressure's going to be low. They're going to try to put me on pressors. I'm going to want to die. It's going to be great! Water. That, is, that the, is that the eat your calories guy, Glut? Load, please. I think it is. He, this guy, I would highly suggest. Also, like, if you're ever just, like, thinking, like, I really want to eat healthy and I want to turn myself around, but it's so expensive. When I was in college, I was addicted to this subreddit. It's called Eat Cheap and Healthy. Reddit.com slash r slash eat cheap and healthy. One word. Literally, you can go there. They have a calculator. You can go in and you can say, I've got 20 bucks for the next three weeks. Help me buy groceries. And the, it, they have a thing that like goes, okay, this is where you're going to go. This is where you're going to go to get all these things. And you're going to be able to live for the next three weeks. And it's going to be healthy. It's a lot of beans and potatoes, let me tell you. But holy shit, it was, gr it was a godsend when I was in school because I was poor as fuck. But also, I didn't want to die. Like, I, like, the cafeteria food was just like crap. The one you meant at TwitchCon, I was just going to pull this video up and show people. If you're ever... if. I think you're beautiful the way you are. Like, just eat a cupcake if you need to have a fucking cupcake. But this guy is pretty great. I call him the eat your... I, did I say eat your calories guy? Count your calories guy? Because he's very real. He doesn't believe in fucking fake... Like, uh, what is it? Magical food. Magical diets. He doesn't believe in fairy dust of like, if all you do is eat protein, you'll lose all that weight and all your problems are going to be solved. I'm here to tell you, I gained 75 pounds in college and then lost it all. Being thin solved nothing, still have all my problems, still super depressed, still on a lot of meds. So if you're looking to lose weight because you think it solves problems, it doesn't. That's just my first piece of advice. But this guy ends most of his videos with count your calories because he's very much like just calories in, calories out, period. That's it. Stop with the fucking magic. You make it complicated. You make it weird. You make it so people are hurting themselves. It's just so simple. If you just – but simple. I remember when I lost all that weight like – I, went, I was in a bad relationship, ate my feelings, school was really hard for me, ate my feelings about a lot of things, gained a shit ton of weight, and when I was losing that weight, and when I lost it, people would ask me, how did you do that? And I said, oh, I just cut my food in half and ran. No one wants that answer. No one wants, oh, you ate better and exercised? Because that's not magic, and it's not easy, and they already know it. They're looking for a secret. Everybody wants some secret. There was no fucking secret. I literally would cut my food in half, put half in the fridge, sit down to eat the half that I left out, and I'd be so full and lazy that I'd never go get the other half. It was just mind-fucking myself, but it's, it's like, <coughs> I just like how factual, he, factual is not the word I'm looking for, he's uh, realistic, and he's not, he's not preying on people's insecurities, he's not going out there judging people, he just wants you to be to feel good that's it I, I truly get that message from him like at whatever size that is whatever weight that is whatever shape that is he just wants you to feel good but he's here for with advice if you need it he's just such a go good guy leveraging lazy in place of willpower is kind of magic I mean that's literally how I lost my weight that's how I lost it all was 
because I'm one of those people where if I'm craving something, I will not be able to function until I have that thing. Like I will graze through the kitchen on healthier items until eventually I just eat that thing because I'm now obsessed and I need that thing. So in knowing myself and knowing that's what I do, what I would do is say, like I've told you guys about the giant burrito place in my college town, literally burritos the size of my fucking thigh, just the most impressive burritos. And I loved them. And I would eat the entire fucking burrito, which was like 2,700 calories. And then I'd have chips and everything on top of it. And that's fine if it's like one meal a day and you're exercising all the time, of which I was not doing. So if I was craving that burrito, I would order that burrito. I'd get it. And in the kitchen, quite literally, fucking cleave that thing in half. Just perfectly. Because both halves are identical. It doesn't matter. Take one half, put it in the fridge, sit down and eat a half. And I'd be fine and just, I'm so lazy. Like the work involved in getting up, getting the foil off that burrito half, putting it in the microwave heat. Meh. I'm good. That's all I did. That was it. And I ran. I run because I'm anxious, though, let's be honest. But that was it. It's not magic. I ate whatever the fuck I wanted to eat. Ice cream, cake, pancakes. I went out to breakfast with my friends. I ate, I ate whatever I wanted. I would just quite literally brain fuck myself. Because my brain, for some reason, I don't know if it's like the parents like, there are starving kids in Africa. Clean your plate. Whatever. My brain says clean your plate. Clean it. Eat the food. Someone has gifted you a gift of this meal. Eat it. You're disrespectful if you don't. So if I just cut it in half and don't put it on my plate, I don't fucking feel bad. I don't know. It's just mindfuckery. That's all I did. But it wasn't magic by any means. I ate anything I wanted. I still eat whatever the fuck I want. It's the only reason I run. I just, when I want something, I want it and I'll eat it. This is the magic guy, though. He's great. Hold on. Let me turn the volume up. What's his username? It's... Scotty.k.fitness. I fucking love pancakes. Ugh. <laughs> He's such a fucking dork. Dude, I've been on a bread making kick. I think I'm going to try focaccia soon. I use a rice I use a rice cooker bowl all the time. Dude, his weird fucking poses in his videos are so weird and funny. <laughs> What's a rice cooker bowl? The bowl that comes out of a rice cooker? Have you ever had a rice cooker? A rice cooker it usually has like a bowl that is comes out of it. Like the whole inside comes out. No shit. I use mine all the time. Oh, it's sugar-free pudding. Sugar-free, I think vanilla pudding. Or banana pudding or something? Sugar-free pudding? Pudding. But not the British pudding. Like, uh, what do you guys... Custard. It's custard. Ha-ha! <laughs> Sugar-free custard. You add milk. Give him a minute. <coughs> Have you never made custard like the powder from powder? I can speak to the sugar-free. It tastes just as good. Like, it's good. I don't... I've never understood Jell-O. I just don't get it. <laughs> Everything is fine. Me in the kitchen. Fuck! It's fine! <laughs> Actually, I think it's like, f how do they pronounce it? I pronounce it fa but I think it's fa fahe or fa or fa or something. fa yeah. Yeah. Faggy. It's fucking faggy yogurt and it's delicious. Oh my God, Pitsy. Yes. Do you also want to know another fun fact? In The Sopranos, Tony was 36. That's how old I am. He had, like, fully functioning, bad-mouthing teenagers in season one. I know! What the fuck? Rest in peace, beautiful Tony. I love you so much. 36. 
<laughs> Yay, we're all dying. <coughs> I love yogurt. What have we fucking achieved? You fucking got me. What up, Captain Staples? How are you, love? <laughs> Custard. My room? Oh, we had chaos today. Measure with your heart. We had chaos today. I had to pull out the audio cable chaos box. So many cables. That is thick as fuck. This is so many ingredients, but it's probably delicious. I fucking love Cool Whip. God damn it, this is making me hungry. Really? I'm shocked, but also impressed. <clears throat> yeah, no, you missed the no shit. So I don't know if you the last like week, my audio cord has been being weird for some reason. It's very bizarre. Like all of a sudden audio would only be in one side or it would crackle or whatever. And this morning it just died <laughs> like it just went to shit. So I'd spend like 15 minutes trying to find a new audio cord. Thank fuck I had one in my dreaded cord box, but I went into chaos mode and whipped everything out I could, even a new headset. I grabbed another headset off my wall of corpse headsets because I was like, is it the headset? It's not. Thank God, because this headset is so fucking expensive. Oh my God, I would have died a little bit inside. Does he, what's, let me see. I'm gonna go to his account. Does he have, I wanna see an example of a more difficult recipe because that one was seemed, I mean, I'm complaining because I'm lazy and hate cooking, but like, I wonder if he has, what would be an example of one that's more difficult recipe? I'm curious and I want to know. He has cooking playlists. Oh, how do I see your playlists? Oh, I see them. Playlists. Brutal product. Fitness rants. Cooking. Okay, let's see. He's got BBL pizza. What? Ooh, VR, let me grab it. Hold on. BBL pizza? Does that mean the same thing I think it means? You know what? Um, this headset, it's, a, it's called the brand is Focal. That looks like Focal. Focal. It's, it's like audiophile level. Like, I'm not, not a flex. I went through a period of time where I was getting migraines from my headsets. Like consistently just every day I was ending stream with a migraine turned out to be my hair is literally so heavy that when it gets so long it pulls on my scalp and gives me migraines crazy I know so I went through this like flush of buying headsets where I have just I literally have a wall of them they're all hanging up and it has a sign that says the morgue of just every headset that I ever went through and this was the the like peak of me freaking out trying to find a headset that would work for my head and I think this headset Oh my god, it was like a thousand dollars. They're like, I mean, if you got a K sitting around, a lazy K, if you will, and you want to hear your music the best it'll ever hear in your fucking life. They're phenomenal, but you don't have to do that because there's, these sound great. And what are, what are bear dynamics like? 300 bucks still not cheap by any fucking means but bear dynamics are phenomenal and super fucking comfy and you can replace the ear pads you can just buy replacements on amazon i could tell you about headphones all day long i've gone through the goddamn ringer i wear these essentially because i spent so much money on them and they sound so good i have to like i have to get use out of them and i have i think i've gotten a fair amount of use out of them they're amazing they sound so good anubis like what do you mean like, do they need a, um, like a shit stack? No. They don't really make headphones that need that anymore because so many people don't really want to do that. They want to have audiophile headphones that you can just plug and go. 
you can like I've got uh uh what what is the little it's a d, d what is the little box you can put in line and you can control the volume and shit and it gives extra power to the headphones you can and I have that but I don't find any necess like none of that translates to you guys on stream so I don't find the point like a DAC amp a DAC amp DAC amp I did it before you typed it Captain Staples we did it together our brains merged yes DAC amp that. I've got one. I've got a couple. I just, there's no point because it doesn't translate, like none of that translates over to stream and they sound phenomenal without it, which is honestly to me a big selling point because I used to, like I do have headphones that needed a shit stack and I had all that shit on my desk and none of it translates to you guys though. It was just literally giving power to the headphones. Big selling point for me is some nice fucking audiophile headphones that I don't need any of that extra shit. Like these get powered just fine. <coughs> The only thing I'd complain about is this. Like, I'm not a huge fan of it needing to be plugged into both phones individually, but whatever. What are you going to do? That's what I think these are is the 80 ohms. Or no, these are these are the 770s, but I have the 80s as well. I have the 80. I think the 80s are open back. Are the 80s open? Because these ones are closed. I have those. I've got V Modas. I've got Audio Technicas. I've got Sure. I've got, what is the blue ones? Sony Bass or something like that. There's so many fucking headsets. It's disgusting. I've got a couple Sony headsets. I've got a lot of headsets that were great. It's unfortunate that it wasn't the headsets causing head the headaches. It was literally my hair. <clears throat> the time I broke my parents bought me $200 Kenwoods. Damn. In the late 90s and I accidentally broke them. I still wore them, <gasps> holding them in my head until I felt okay about tossing them. 100% understand that. Yep. It's because they're just so goddamn expensive. I have a new set of Turtle Beach headphones. I don't like that the cord that came with it's short. Thankfully, it has its own dongle for wireless pairing. That's kind of nice. Astros, I've heard, are really nice. I've heard good things about Steel Series. Um, I just didn't want a headset. I wanted headphones because, like, I'm not. I don't need a mouthpiece. I don't like headset. You know, like headsets meant for gaming and whatnot. They tend to be really fucking heavy and boxy, and they're not very comfortable. And they have a lot going on that I just don't need because I have a wonderful mic. I have like the Shure. Sure, mic or whatever. I don't need any of it, so I'd rather focus on the quality of just what we're hearing instead. Dongle's a great word, except that I have 50 in my house somewhere because of them removing headphone jacks for so long. What the fuck? I have three different headsets, each one, each for different uses. I completely understand that. Yep. IEMs are my favorite. Honestly, my IEMs, the cord got broken. They're just so expensive. I haven't been able to afford to re replace it. Literally, the cord's like $100. Did Logi buy Astro? Did they really? It's because they're heavy. David, I'm convinced of it. I've had the best headset I ever had was the Cloud. What is it? HyperX Cloud? HyperX? HyperX is the brand, right? HyperX Clouds, that is literally like the most lightweight, non-invasive, longest battery in terms of Bluetooth headset I've ever had. If In terms of a headset. But everything else, like I had the Corsair headset. I gave that one away. I give a lot of my headsets away because what the fuck's the point of hoarding them? But I had the Corsair one, and the like white one, where the ears were almost like diamond shaped. And because of that, because it had angles on it, it would push on my jaw. Like I could feel it right here just knobbing my jaw all day. It was weird. I don't know. The Hyper, right? The HyperX clouds are amazing. I think I have the one and the twos somewhere. I keep looking at that wall because there's just so many headphones. I have the one and the twos. Those were really nice. Wireless noise canceling for work, but they aren't my best sounding ones. I've never had a good Bluetooth set that is the best sounding in my life. Or what I notice is a lot of Bluetooth sets, like, especially when it comes to listening to music on my phone, I can't get the volume up like I want it. And they're like, these are unsafe levels of volume. And I'm like, okay, but I just physically can't hear the volume you claim is safe. But it's only Bluetooth sets. I don't know what that is. I recommend the KZ Pro on Amazon. They're 25 with a $9 replacement cable and sound fantastic. Way better than Sony's man's $100. That's no shit. The IEMs that BDO got me, they're called the MEs. I think they're just called ME. Something, something. They're like $20 and they sound fucking phenomenal. They're not Bluetooth, but goddamn, do they sound good. Bluetooth doesn't work with a GoXLR, so I don't want that anyways. I have the food. We're t we are, we are... A community of many conversations, Vex, you know this. I have multiple things going on at one time. I prefer it this way. It keeps my brain going. Oh, no shit. I don't have a mic like yours. My headset doesn't feel heavy at all, and I can replace the foam earpieces. That's really nice. Honestly, I'm jealous. I think I just have a sensitive head. I genuinely like my head or like my face shape. Another thing I've noticed with a lot of like uh, headsets or um, headphones in general is they have oval 
like big fucking long oval f uh, cans and they sit on my jawbone. I don't know. Maybe I just have like a super angled jaw or something because it just right there. I'll start to feel like this fucking pressure and I'm like, what the? I don't like it. I got my wireless noise canceling for work, but they're the best sounding ones. Yeah. We are farmers. Dun, 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 dun. What? They have to be comfortable. I mean, staples, no shit. I'm sure you dealt with the same shit I have, but like, I mean, I've literally Googled like headphones you can wear more than six hours. Because they just don't design them. Even, even like these, like the nicest, most pretentious fucking audiophile headphones, they'll say like, these are built to be worn for two hour times, three hours at a time or something like that. I'm like, okay, but there's a population of people now that live on the internet and we have to wear headphones all day. You have to start making them more comfortable. Like for fuck's sake. Twitch has been stupid for days now. Vex, no shit. Did I keep it up? <gasps> I lost it. Um, I took a screenshot of it the other day, but I finally got to show people. If you've ever heard me say, oh my God, the chat just did the doubling thing. Give me one second. I actually got a screenshot of it the other day. Twitch has been weird for days. Like three days ago, it was just going down. Like the whole entirety of the thing. And then the chat hasn't been loading. So like one monitor, one of my computers wouldn't load chat for like almost half the day. But it will literally take the words you guys are typing and overlap them onto each other. No exaggeration. It's so weird. It's been that way for days. So it's not just you. Chat's been stopping for me as well. Like it'll load in one fell swoop. You know that happened to me on Twitter this morning? I felt shitty as fuck. I opened Twitter this morning and all of a sudden I had like six DMs. And I was like, what the fuck? I don't get DMs on Twitter. Like why do I have... They were all from TwitchCon. I just was not getting any notifications or anything for anything. I'm sure that's just Twitter being Twitter, but like that felt shitty. I was like, what the fuck? Like I got a message from Robo that was like, I'm lost. Where are you guys? And I was like, what the fuck? What day is it? What's happening? It was literally from TwitchCon. But they just came in. I think the internet's being fuckery. I have no idea. I have the problem with the jaw oval ones. Pressing the mask, right? Exactly, me too. I need, like these look like ovals, but they're actually a circle. I need a circular headphone and most audiophile headphones are built for a bigger head and tend to be ovals. The only pair of headphones I've found that I like are my Razer. I've heard good things about Razer to be honest and Razer used to be crap. I just can't wear headphones just hurts my neck or ears or something. Haven't got the disposable money for super fancy ones. The fancier they get, the heavier they get. So I'm just going to nix that for you right there. That is one thing I've learned is that if it's the weight of the headphones or whatever, like bothering your neck and your head, Mm -mm. You should, if you can, literally look for some IEMs in ear monitors. The sound is identical. It's literally like they, inca like they're just, I'm not shitting you. The ones on Amazon, they're called ME. Look for ME in ear monitors. They're like 20 bucks and they're phenomenal. And they come with a mil, like they come with like 10 different pairs of different size inner ear parts. So you can change them out. So you're not like stuck with one size earbud or whatever. They're seriously phenomenal. You don't need to spend $1,000 on a headset. The more expensive the headset, you're really getting, that's why, that's why I call them audiophile headsets. You're getting into hobbyist levels where it's not better for you. It's just superfluous shit. The sound stage and whatnot and like metal parts. And like, I'm pretty sure this set was an extra $100 because it was blue and uh, whatever, rose gold. That's what you're getting when you get into the high ends. You're not getting better comfort performance whatever i mean performance maybe but not on levels that really like even i can hear most of the time if that makes sense but seriously those iems are great oh inside yeah if you hate having stuff in your ear i can see how that would be like no shit the weird get this though staples the weirdest part about iems the weirdest the hardest part to get to get used to is that you don't feel anything in your ear that's what IEMs do. It's not an earbud. In-ear monitor is not earbud. I can't wear earbuds. Not only can I not stand things in my ear, but I have like a really tiny inner ear, I guess. And it's like bony. And even Apple AirPods, within 30 minutes, I just get this fucking horrific bone ache in my skull and I can't stand it. IEMs are quite literally designed so you don't feel them. So like when I switch to my IEMs, all day I'll be doing this like going to push them in like they've fallen out of my ear, but they're definitely still there and I can hear everything. But it's this weird instinct because you just don't feel anything. It's what they're designed to do and it's very bizarre. But it's hard to get over. You really don't feel anything on your head. And then the amount of times I've gotten up and been like, oh, 
on the cord because you don't feel anything on your head. It's weird. It's very weird, but that's kind of what they're designed to make. Designed to do. Constantly. Me just, con I do this. I'm constantly, oh, did it fall? Oh, no, it's still in my ear. Con all day. With the IMs. It's literally, but it's because they're designed to not be intrusive or, you know, whatever. <coughs> yep, getting the right ear tips and no shit. I've bought like my own, like I've bought an additional ear tips online to get the right ones. My favorite ones, if you are feeling like you identify with me with ear AirPods and shit like that, like they hurt your ear, get the um, ear tips that are memory foam. There's so many different kinds nowadays, but they're literally made of memory foam. So once you put them in, you like squeeze them down, put it in your ear, and they slowly expand, and they only expand to the size of your ear. So there's no pressure going on. And there's different sizes of them, obviously. Like, I, I couldn't talk enough about IEMs. They're just phenomenal. If you've ever worn IEMs for eight hours a day, every day for a couple months, after a while, you can't do them anymore. R what? But, like, why? You could feel them? I don't think they fit right. If you could feel them, because literally, I've worn them eight hours a day for years and didn't feel them. Ever. Like, I switch up every once in a while just for funsies, but, like, no shit, I didn't feel them. Decided yesterday to go to a concert. I'm going solo because I don't have anyone to go with. I'm excited. Dude, it'll be fun. It's not like you could talk to someone if you're there. It's only my second concert. Any advice? Bring a water bottle. It's illegal in America now to not let people bring in an empty water bottle to fill at concert venues because everything at concerts is expensive. Like, everything. Like, and not just expensive. It's, like, $18 beers and shit. But they have to have water fountains. It's illegal not to now. So bring an empty water bottle. That would be my biggest advice. And then depending on where you're sitting, bring a blankie or something to sit on. Our concert venue is Red Rocks. So literally the bleachers are stone. So it's nice to have a blankie to cushion your ass because like, wow, my butt bones can start killing me after a while because it's just rock you're sitting on. Earplugs. Concert earplugs are a huge one. Again, depending on where you're sitting, I would, because it's your second concert, I'm just going to say do it. Get yourself some earplugs. Don't be like me. I was going to say like, it depends on where you're sitting, but I destroyed my ears. I went to so many concerts as a kid not wearing any ear, any earplugs at all. And to this day, I have a constant ring in my ear and kind of feel like I'm in a fishbowl all the time. Don't ruin your ears. Get some earplugs. Protect your eardrums from the loud sounds. Fruit fly haunting me. Because IMs were designed for performance and such, the cord's easier to hide. Yeah, it just sits behind your ear, but it just sits there. It's not like, it's not dependent on that cord holding them in. Oh my god, Anubis, your IEMs sound like they were way too big in your ear. I've never had vacuum pressure. Like, I've, what? I've had my dogs rip my IEMs out of my ear and never had, like, a... That sounds too tight. But also, I use the memory foam ear tips, and they breathe because I can't stand that sensation of sweaty inner ear. Like, that is so gross to me. I can't do it. My ears are fucked, yeah. But, like, if this is only your second concert, you have a chance to protect yourself. You literally just go get, get yourself some fucking uh, earplugs. You'll still hear the music. You're not blocking out the music. All you're doing is protecting your inner ear from that bass blast harming you. Like, they say, like, you know, your ears are covered in microscopic tiny little hairs. And when those hairs are damaged or they're freaking out or something, they start to vibrate and die. And that's the ringing you hear in your head after a concert. And once that ringing ends, you will never hear that pitch again. Like, that hair's done. Granted, there's billions of pitches to hear, but you're never going to hear that one again. Like, literally be careful. <coughs> oh, silicone. Yeah, I don't, I can't do it. That is the, like, that's, I can completely understand why you're annoyed by them now, though. Like, 100% sympathy. I would not want to wear those either. I did the memory foam ones that breathe, and they, like, come out real easy because I couldn't. Oh, my God. <laughs> Water earbud liquid IV blanket and a flashing light kaleidoscope glasses. Yes. Flashing lights can literally lead to migraines and stuff. No shit. Even if you're not seizure prone, that's good advice. How often do you need to replace the foam ear tips? I replace them like I replace makeup. So every six weeks because they're so cheap and because they look disgusting. Like, to be completely honest with you, if you're putting something in your ear, it's going to get earwax on it. Gross. Gross. But that's like general rule of makeup is any sponge or anything that's absorbing moisture, or anything that's wet, so like, I'm looking for an example and I can't see one, but like a mascara, 
wand or um, something like that, anything like that, six to eight weeks maximum. Three months if you're feeling real saucy about it and you don't wear them as often as I do, maybe. But that's because they look fucking disgusting. You know the satanic doo I showed you? I'm going to see. Oh, I'm excited for you. That's going to be fucking sick. And Glut brings up a good point. Like, I don't know how, like, what your immune system's like or whatever. But this time of year, I might wear a mask and bring some hand sanity. Because, like, this time of year, it's fall. Kids are going back to school. They're Petri dishes. And COVID's not going anywhere. Unfortunately, because people suck, we're stuck. And you're going to be in a mass of sweaty people coughing and spitting and singing and just like, you know, being all fluid esque with each other. Might be smart if you've got one. It doesn't hurt. Could keep you warm, too, if it's a nighttime concert. Volta gave me ear... I thought that said vulva for a minute. <laughs> Nubis. Volta gave me earplugs for his hardcore concert here, and thankfully he did. That room was ear busting. I have... Vi I mean, seriously, the first time I ever saw Gojira, I think I was 20, and I was standing this close to one of the speakers... So much so that I swear it was like rippling the skin on my face. And I was just sitting there like, yeah, ew, ah, like, but I, I had that hung for like a week afterwards. I still think about that one. Like, I don't know what the damage I did, but man, take care of your ears. I don't, the, I just don't even know what I've done. Thinking I'm fucking cocky and invincible. Seasonal flu and COVID. Yeah. Get your COVID shot, get your booster, get your flu shot. It doesn't, never hurts to do it. I'm not on the floor. I got a seat. That's good. That's probably better, honestly. Doesn't matter that you're going to um, con, music event, movie theater, day out sightseeing, bring your sanitizer. I mean, I haven't not brought hand sanitizer places with me since I got out of nursing school, respiratory school. Like, I have hand sanitizer with me everywhere, but everyone I know has hand sanitizer. Like, that's just something we bring now. There's some new stuff being researched that's pretty cool, but we're still nowhere near any kind of publicly made available 100% COVID immunity. 100%. And, like, no matter what they develop, if 100% of people don't get it, we'll never be immune. Which sucks and is fucked. Yeah, because it literally it just constantly mutates. Like, what are you going to do? That's what a virus does. Elderberry drink, or you can do elderberry. Have you ever done, Zaffy, those, um, they're like lozenges. I get those at, like, the health food store, but I get those when I go traveling and stuff like that. Just to try to, like, boost up my immune system or something because I do not want to get sick. I hate being sick. I was dumb. I used to get on the riding lawnmower in high school, blasting my Walkman headphones so I could hear over the mower. Oh, We've all, I mean, we all did it. It's terrible. Like, the louder and more painful you can make your music, the more successful you were. Hello, my sweet boy. How are you? How are you doing today, my son? Good. Have you had an exciting morning? You seem better already. Yeah. Yesterday, you didn't seem too hot. You feeling better? Less shitty? You're still just as handsome. Everyone loves you. He's much better. We did not wake up to dry heaving today. Thankfully, you're very cute. Thank you for always coming and saying hello. He's just the fucking sweetest. His bean is a lot better. It's not like literally after that first day, it was no longer inflamed and red. Thank fuck. I think literally, it, I don't think it was a hot spot. Like that's Zach was think, thinking it was a hot spot, but I never saw him chewing on it or like licking it obsessively or anything. And after that first day, it just looks a lot better. Like it's light pink, you know, pale pink and looks like it's healing. Still hairless, though, like completely fucking hairless, which is so weird. But yeah, he's not chewing it, which is good. That was a precious little yawn. Thank you for that. You're very cute all the time. Yeah, I, that was worrying me, especially because they're out in the yard and they're like clawing in mud and dirt and shit. And I don't want that to get in his foot. Mm. Rage, no shit. I can't figure out how it happened. I woke up in the morning and it was just the first thing I saw in his foot. And I was like, how in the fuck did that happen? It looked like he degloved a toe. Just one. Ooh. Oh, with turmeric lemon. Yes. I love turmeric. That sounds delicious. Oh, no shit. I've done that with heavy equipment. I was running a friend under loader and spreading sand on a field, blasting, flogging Molly. Mm-hmm. We've all been there. Yeah. No, the pad is 100% fine. And that's another reason why I didn't think it was a hot spot. Because I think, like, if he was licking the toe to death, you would think the toes next to it would be affected. Or that he'd be, like, chewing on the pad. Nothing. It's literally, like, 
if I was showing you his back toe, it was just like the whole top of the toe, just, just bare, bare ass knuckle, scared the crap out of me. So I just, I put aquifer all over it, of which he did not mind or care. It didn't seem to be painful. And ever since then, it looks a lot better. Like, I can barely even see it now, just looking at his foot. It looks like it's getting its hair back already. It's only been two days. Thank fuck. Yeah, that's, I can't figure out if it was a hot spot or if he skinned his toe on something. Like, I just had no idea. It was just so random and sad. And then he had a stomach ache on top of it, so he was just pathetic. You're so pathetic and cute, though. I just wish you could tell me what was wrong and then I could help. Or be like, Mom, this is what I did to my toe. Please help me. That's, I mean, he must have literally done it overnight. It's just, it was wild how much it came out. At this point in my life, always dress for comfort, but you do you, boo-boo. That's me. Is it worth to dress up a little, just be comfy? I go comfy. I've never been to a concert where, like, the lights are on and people are actually looking at each other for it to matter. I mean, wearing a concert tee or something if you want to is fine, but I go comfy every time. I always go for comfort, especially because all of our concerts are outside, so it's going to get cold inevitably. But yeah, I go for comfort every time. Good shoes, especially, because even if you're, you're in a seat, people will probably stand up, clap, you know, sing along to certain songs. Then they'll sit. There's always like a sit, stand, sit, stand kind of thing going on constantly. Good shoes are always nice to have. 100%. Yeah. You're so cute. You always hide. And now you know that you're not hiding anymore. Somehow. Somehow. You do you, boo-boo, should be on a shirt. I want that shirt. I can make that shirt. I didn't make up that, though. I don't know who said you do you, boo-boo. I just say it all the time. That was cute as hell. You're adorable. All the time. I hope you know that. Cuddo. Always on the floor, so close, strong. That was me, too. I've always been on the floor, but even if I'm not, yeah. Oh, my God. You moshed in flip. Do you, do you still have toes? One of my poods at one point got a cut in his fucking pad. That happened to Lil one time. She had a cut down the middle of one of her pads, of her foot, and to this day, I have no fucking idea how it happened. I went searching the yard for literally anything. What up, Kel? How are you? No idea. Lilith, can you just... Go hump something else. No one's impressed by you. She's such a weird dog. I'm a flirty in my flip-flop game strong. I mean, I'm literally wearing slides. Like, I'm here for you, but all those feet? Were you, did you, was everybody else in flip-flops? I know, Lilith, she's such a, she's like, oh, attention? Guess I'll just hump his leg. Ma'am. He doesn't give a shit. I know. She, he doesn't give a shit. He's just like, whatever. You have a huge eye booger, bud. Let me get that. Disgusting. Disgusting. On to paper towel. Bro, that was a huge eye booger. You should have licked that off. <laughs> oh, my God. I love you so much, bud. I love you so much, but why do you want to lick in my mouth so bad all the time? He would. He would eat it. He tries. If he knows I'm getting an eye booger off him, he'll literally go go for it. He'll be like, at my hand. If you can lick it off yourself, it's your treat. But if I have to pick it off, I don't know if I can feed it to you and feel okay. Do you need to go potty? I have to pee. You, you're dancing on my bladder. Dancing on it. Dancing. You want to go potty? You unplug me again. This is why my cord went bad. You. <gasps> Ooh, I am always looking for good sandals, actually. I feel like a lot of sandals are marketed to be really cute and really shitty. You want to go outside? Oh! You know, I feel blessed because I've heard poodles will chew cords. These guys have never chewed a cord in their life. I feel very, very fortunate for that. Never. They've, they, like, will, you know, get, they get stuck on them because they're idiots, but, God, they've never, ever, ever cared, and it's just so... Ooh, those flip-flops do look comfortable. The last comfortable pair of flip-flops I had, they were literally made out of recycled yoga mats. Yeah, oh, he'll scissor through a leash. 
That's the only thing. Like, he's not a chewer, but I've had to replace his leash so many times because it's like his, his, like, it's his sucking his thumb in the car. He puts his leash in his mouth and just uh, 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 until it's broke. When we're walking, no interest, no chewing on it, doesn't give a fuck. But when we're in the car, like, he sits there and, like, sucks on it. Same. Only him, though. She doesn't do it. He does it to hers. You want to come say hi, Miss Paws? Miss Muppet, ma'am. Hi. How are you today? You look, she, do you notice she crawls up on me and looks at her brother? That's all she cares about. She crawls up and she's like, now it's my turn, you stupid whore. You don't actually care about me. You're just here to make someone jealous and be a bitch about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is Delauded? Uh, I mean, that's a loaded question. Why, can I ask why? It's a painkiller. A very, very serious, strong painkiller. The reason I ask, no shit, yeet. I, like, this is a real, tr I have to pee so bad. I had a patient one time whose sister had a headache and decided to unhook the Dilaudid from her sister's IV and sip on it, and she fucking had a seizure. It almost died. Dilaudid is serious fucking shit. Not to be fucked with. Yeah, it's fucking gnarly. That stuff is, I mean, that is serious pain control. Yeah, Dilaudid, it's, I believe it's a narcotic. It's hardcore shit. Hydromorphone, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, they're play fighting. This is what they do. They don't really, if you watch them, they'll always go off camera. But all they do is they stand next to each other with their mouth open and go, That's it. They never bite. They just like at each other. It's so weird. I wish people thought like that. Because they need to go outside and I'm ex I'm delaying it. Oh my god. <laughs> they do. Oh, they definitely do the Muppet smack. Why do you guys go way over there to fight? No one can see you. Be cute. All right, first break. Be right. All right, kids. Be right back. Be time. They are fast. Wait, they're smart, fast, agile, and fluffy, but they'd rather just lay on you. That's poodles. Truer words have never been spoken. That is facts. They are big, big, dumb idiots, and I love them so much. But, yeah, they, they're so fucking agile. It's when I get to see them, like, run out in the woods and shit like that and leaping over things, and they're literally, like, agility dogs. Like, if you were doing showing them, they're agility dogs. They're so fucking slick, but the vast majority of the time, they're on their back, just dick up, like, <laughs> Jesus fucking a cock! Happy Halloween. <laughs> Cheers, cocky. Thank you for the biddies, you generous fuck. Great Dane that's a lap dog. Yeah. Every, you know, every Great Dane I've ever known has been a lap dog. And a big baby, to be honest. <laughs> See, I'm awake now. <laughs> They do, they prance 100%. They love showing off. Like, half the time, they'll, like, rush people at the dog park because they, like, people are like, oh, my God, poodles, and they want to, and they rush them, and then they just prance in front of them and run off. Like, chase me, bitch. I'm like, you, you fuckers. Dogs, they're the best. That's most big dogs. I feel like most big dogs just do not have the lifespan they deserve because they're just 
big balls of love and they're adorable. Okay, hold up. We had to watch this, this video I pulled up. I forgot about. This is the difficult, allegedly difficult level recipe. Bur I had a Bernese Mountain Dog growing up. Her name was Mandy. She was a sweet girl. We rescued her from someone that I think died. Like they got cancer or something. And so my parents took her in. She was a really good dog. She looked like a bear. God, his videos are so quiet. Oh, yeah, they're like a giant uh, Pomeranian. They just want to lay on your lap and be adorable. <coughs> I'm sorry, what? Same. How? Same. I don't know. I don't know. I guess he gets bored, right? He's just trying to add variety. I get it. fuck is that He's such a dork. No. I don't understand. I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> Alchemy, with my love. Satan's cock. Thank you so much for subbing to the class, keeping the classy life, giving an anus swings for 69 months, motherfucker. That's nice. <laughs> I appreciate you and love you. How are you, love? His name is. I know he's great. This is Glut introduced me to this guy. His name is scotty.k.fitness and he just does these videos where it's like good food but made as healthy as you could and low calories and shit and I dig that I see we're dying today we've smoked some pot we've done we did blame cocky made me do it I gave it a wash turned it on and slipped it in also, I have everything jacked up 100%. His videos are just really quiet, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> you didn't know what? Fucking what? How do you eat with a mustache like that? How? Okay. Anyone here have a crazy epic mustache? You truly have to just live with food in it, right? Alchemy, how? 
explain because like I'm watching him shove the food in and it looks like he has an extra lip he's getting around like almost a cartoon character where their mustache is their mouth he gets the question in the comments every video okay that makes sense because seriously I'm impressed Oh, he's so petite. You guys said he was shorter than his fridge, and I was trying to figure it out when he was hanging off it. I'm like, I think you could. No, he's. I think he's tiny. Colin just sucks the food off it and carries on. I don't know what to do about that. How do you suck a dick with a mustache like that? Like one that literally covers your mouth. Did he have, like, inches less in the fridge? Okay. All right. All right. Vacuum stash. Just, I feel like it'd get in my mouth. Like. It's epic. I just don't know how you. It's, it's, it's the same quandary as those long fucking nails. How do you live with them? I need my tips. I need my fingies. It's miraculous. It's beautiful. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm in awe. It's just, I just genuinely wonder how you function. <laughs> and that's literally how he ends, I think, most of his videos. Hold on. Oh, my God. A new video of herself harmonizing. With the air raid sirens going on in Ukraine right now. So. Perspective is everything, you know. <coughs> because damn. His music really is on another level. So I can see that he'd be at like a... A very uh, like massive perfectionist, and he'd be hard on himself. I can. Someone was saying earlier that like apparently some of his shows are really, really good, and some of them his voice just doesn't turn out for it, which is sucks. But also allegedly he sings until he bleeds, which is upsetting and can't be a that. I mean, just like it's not sustainable. But he has been going since the '90s, so maybe it is. 100% eat. That's a really good thing. To, perspective may be one thing, but the plight of one people doesn't diminish the challenges of another. 100%. 110%. Couldn't agree more. Sorry, I was moving chat over so I can see you guys. I have to pee again, so we're going to take one more quick break, play an ad real quick, and then we're going to jump into the game because I realize it's time. It She be a flying. It's crazy. I don't know what it is about this week, but I feel like time is just like fucking escaping me. Scene of action, that sounds really familiar. Hold on. No, Allie, we're about to jump in now. I started late this morning. My allergy, I, I, I'm assuming it's my allergies. I'm not sick, but man, I'm just a phlegm factory. I was just blowing my nose constantly. I was like, I don't want to do this on stream. It's gross. So no, you didn't miss anything. We're about to jump into it, but I guess I drink a lot of water or something because I'm super fucking hydrated and I have to pee again. No, what's up? Last. Of us. And then we're going to play that. Just sitting here. Because we're not that exciting. Welcome back, everybody. Didn't realize how late it got in the day. I apologize. But let's get as, let's, let's get as far as we can, I suppose. I think we, like, literally we paused or saved in the middle of a battle. I shink. Good song. All right, game. I'm so glad I figured out my audio cord shit. I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have the right audio cord. I would have shit a little. Just a little. Steam, don't, not today. Don't be a cunt. So not like I'm... so confusing because then allegedly like with those sequels that go on like Jason has a sister 
because his mom went on to have more kids. And so he's hunting his sister, but we can't really understand why. And then like in the last, in the movie last night, it was like the only person who can kill Jason is one of his own blood. But then there's more movies, which means he wasn't killed. I just don't know. They lead us to believe there's a lot of killing and a lot of death and people are dying. And I just don't know if that's actually happening at all. Swords and Lakes, divine magic. Kids and Lakes, high magic. You're not wrong. He had a face. He had a fucked up face in the first one. And then many, many years passed so he could grow up and be beefy. But he was like in the lake. Like he's dead. I think the two we're watching tonight, I can't, it's Freddy versus Jason and one other one. And it's like the two longest Freddy, I think the two longest Jason movies are tonight. And tonight I believe is the last night of them, right? Water bloats create, but water bloat takes, uh, I mean, sh sure. I'm looking for logic where there is no logic. Let's be real. There's no point in that. I don't know what to do with that. The running theory is that he didn't drown, but they thought he did. And then his mom thought he drowned. He doesn't die. So that's the theory. So he's like living in the lake and in the woods and just like getting yoked. I'll buy it. I mean, I'll take it. They just, I mean, the first, I think the first three were fun. And like, you know, the classic like camp counselors getting murdered and lots of titties and lots of sex. And then after that, it, it, it's almost like they tried turning it into a real story. Like they're like, we're going to try to give background and we're going to try to build character arcs or something. And nobody cares. That's not what we're here for. Yeah. It just afterwards, literally, Bobo, it was just like, like last night, I feel like half of the people in movie, in our movie night discord, which is every night, two night, two hours after disc, after stream. If you're wondering every night we watch movies, but um, I think everybody was like competing to see how high we could get. To just not realize the movie was happening and or to start enjoying it because it was just absurd. It was absurd. They're, they literally milk it to the point where there's nothing. There's, I mean, they're milking the wrong teat. It's like they tried to milk it and they accidentally found the, the penis instead of the nipples. Do you know what I'm saying? You got an eye booger, bud. I got it. I got it. You're being creepy over there. What are you doing? Coming to say hi. Hi, Bubba. What are you doing? Have you had an exciting day? Yeah, you feel a lot better today, don't you? Your nose is nice and wet. You look better. You look cheery and full of it. Should we go play? You don't, you, got a, you got a nasty mouth, son. You can't lick in my mouth. Now you're stuck in my, you know what? Trick knows what time it is, so... <laughs> He's such a dick. We don't have a cow. We have a bull. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Why is this milk red? <laughs> Strawberry? What are you doing, bud? You know what time it is. All right. We have to find someone cool to raid, though. Are you going to help me? Are you going to help me pick? I know. He pulled my headphones off. Like, he knows what's up. He knows if my headphones are on. If my headphones are on, it's not him time. If my headphones are not on, then it's the trick show, and he's happy again. He's just a little douche. I love him so much, but he's such a little douche. Oh, my God. Okay, hold up. My friend Misty's live, and I haven't got to see her since TwitchCon, which has been a while. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for hanging out with me this week. It's been kind of hectic with the dogs getting injured and being sick and whatnot, but I very much enjoyed the game. We will continue it next week. For those new to my channel or just swinging by, tomorrow's day off day. It's the only day of the week that we take off. And uh, we relax. We try. We don't really relax. We, we clean the house. We get a little manic with it, but it's fine. It's a day off. We do it. But then we'll be back on Tuesday and we'll play more of the game. And I want to, um, Glut got me the uh, serial killer dating game. So I thought it'd be fun to filter that in. One or 
two days or something. I don't know. Or play a little bit in the morning. Something like that. I don't know. But in two hours, we have movie night. So like I said, feel free to come hang out with us. In the meantime, I'm going to go give my dogs all that attention that they're currently begging for. And I hope you take care of yourself. You're kind to yourself. Kind to others. Take your joy, drink water, clean your bong, all of the usual things. When's the last time you cleaned your water bottle? Hmm? Hmm? I'll see you guys on Tuesday.